Now we'll see how you can parameterize your test. That means you can run single test with different sets of input data. For example, I will add a new test fixture class known as Yahoo registration test. Okay, and inside it I make the function test register. Okay, so this test register function will register a user on the Yahoo Mail website. Okay, and inside this we will be having the Selenium code which will be opening the browser and registering the user on the yahoo.com website and then this function would require four parameters like it would require username then it would require the password in order to log in then it would require the existing email id of the person and then the city in which the person lives so these are the four parameters which would be required in order to register a user on the yahoo mail website now i can hard code these username password email and city in the test method and execute it but in that case it will be executed once but I need to execute it four to five times with different sets of data. That means when this test annotation function will be called, when this test method is executed, I want to execute this test different times with different sets of data. Okay, so how we can do that is that we will use a technique known as parameterization wherein this test function will be called any number of times with different sets of data. Okay, so in that case what we do is that we will write a separate data source for it. Okay, so I will make one function public void say register data okay now the return type of this function would be an two dimensional object array would be a two dimensional object array so now uh, how this two dimensional object array works we'll firstly discuss that and then we'll see then we'll implement the parameterization in, in our test case okay so how it works is that you would have this as your two dimensional ob object array in which you have two dimensional object array so it looks like this in which you have your columns and the rows okay so you have your columns and rows inside your two dimensional object array okay so in the first row which have the index starting from 0 1 2 and 3 and similarly for the columns starting the index with 0 1 2 and 3 okay so now what we do is that we'll keep the test data for one repetition in one row okay now suppose you've got the username password email and the city in which the person lives so when i will execute it in the first row i will keep the data for the first set of execution and then in the second row i will keep the data for the second set of execution and similarly for the third row and the fourth row okay so what i will do is that firstly i will declare the two dimensional object array is equal to new object and then we'll specify the number of rows and the columns inside this two dimensional object array so the number of rows would signify the number of times test has to be executed okay 
okay and then the number of columns would signify would be equal to the number of parameters inside the data that is the username password email and the city okay so i have assigned the uh, rows and now we'll assign the value to each row that is firstly i will assign the data in the first row okay so for that i have initialized we will be uh, now assigning the values to the first row so for the zeroth row the first the index of the first row is zero so for the zeroth row we we have how many columns we are do we have for each and every row we have four columns that is so number of columns as over here you can see that number of columns signifies the number of parameters inside the data that is the username password email and city so for each and every row we have four columns okay so over here we declare four and now we will assign the values to the first row that is data at 00 is equal to say i keep the value as user 1 okay and then we have the data for the first row second column is equal to that is the password field okay and similarly for the first row and third column is the email value and then we have the data for the fourth row is the city okay so this is the data for the first row okay and similarly we will assign the values to the second row as well and that would have the first index the index for the second row would be 1 and the values say i keep user 2 password 2 email 2 and city 2 okay and similarly we will assign the values to the third row as well which would have the index as 2 okay and then in the end we can just return this two dimensional object array data that is return data okay so this test register function would be called the number of times as the data present in the rows are filled so as you can see that we have filled three rows with different sets of data so this test register function would be called three times with different sets of data that we have given okay and then now after after writing the data source what we have to do is that we have to write inside this test annotation we have to supply this data source with the annotation test case source inside the test case source we will have to give in the name of this data source that is register data okay so this register data is actually responsible for sending the data to this test register function okay and now i have to supply these four input parameters inside this function test register function okay so i have to supply the input parameters equivalent to the number of columns that you have specified inside this two dimensional object array okay so i pass on the parameters inside this function as string username then i have the password then i have the email and i have the city parameter 
okay so so the zeroth element will go inside the username the first element would go inside the password and the second element would go inside the email and the third element would go inside the city okay and then after that we can just write console dot write line username plus password plus email plus city okay so this is the complete implementation what will happen is that n unit will read the test will read that the test this test has the data source register data okay so it will go inside this data source register data okay so firstly it will call the data source for the first set of data that is for the first row it will print these values okay and then it will be executed for the second row and then the third row okay so as you can see that since we have we have initialized three rows so this test register function would be called would be executed three times with different sets of data okay so when i so let's just see let's just run this once so i right click on this and we click on run test okay so it says that the source name must refer to a static field okay so we need to give the data source as the static okay and then i run it again okay so here you see that this test register function has now passed successfully and it has executed three times and that too with different sets of data for the first set of for the first test register we have the values user1 pass1 email1 and city1 then for the second test we have user2 pass2 email2 and city2 and for the third we have the different sets of values okay so here you can see that it is executed by the n unit you need not to worry that how it is how it is executing you just one only thing that you have to notice that you have to make sure that you are using the correct syntax okay just make sure that you are using the correct syntax and supplying the proper input parameters inside this test register function okay rest you don't have to worry about anything okay how the test method is called okay so this will be very very useful in the testing frameworks which we will be discussing in the coming classes as well okay so this is how you can just parameterize your test test data with the help of this two dimensional object array okay so now we'll see next comes the assertions okay so now we'll see how to use assertions in your test in your test cases okay so i have my this yahoo news test okay so now inside this test news class say inside this function i would have the selenium code inside this function okay and then uh, suppose i want to verify something that i want to verify something for that say i will have the expected value expected value which you will always have okay and then i have the actual value the actual value so i want to compare this expected value with the actual value and i want to match and i want to see that whether the expected and the actual value matches if they do not match then that means that the test is a failure okay or else what i want to do is that i want to make sure that a particular text is present or not or you can say if the link is present or not okay and if it is not present then just throw an error okay so in that case we use assertions 
we use something that is known as assertions okay so for the assertions you have got an inbuilt class known as the assert class okay you have got an inbuilt class known as the assert class in order to use the assertions and this assert class if you do control space by you would see that there are a lot of functions which comes with this assert class Okay, so here you can see that you have a lot many functions inside this assert class. Okay, say suppose I use this first function r equal. Okay, and this, so this r equal is one of the functions inside this assert class, and I use it. And suppose so this assert r equal function it makes it accepts two parameters that is the expected and the actual value. Now so now say suppose I have the expected value as good. Okay, and uh, the actual value is I. I just write this good value. Okay. Okay. So the actual val value will be uh, will actually be reading from the application itself. The Selenium will get this actual value, right? So now I'm just hard coding this value right now. So what this R equal function tells you, what it will do is that it will it says that. If the expected and the actual values are equal, if both of these values are equal, then pass the test. Then it will just pass this test case. That is the test news test news function. Otherwise, if these values are not equal, then it would result in a failure. Okay. So now let us see. I just run my test case. I click on run test. Okay. And now, if you look at the output, so it it says that it it prints the output as test news, and the test has passed successfully. Okay, the test has passed since both the expected and the actual values are equal, so the test has passed. But if suppose I give an unequal value, say I append anything after good, and I give unequal value, expected and the actual values are not equal right now. And now I run it once again. So now you see that the test case has failed since the expected and the actual values are not equal. So the test case has failed. Okay. So this R equal property, this function, it just compares both the expected and the actual value and then prints the result accordingly. Okay. So now uh, this R equal is one of the function. Now we have another function. Similarly, we can use assert dot is true okay and inside this we have to give in the boolean condition okay say i give in the condition as 4 is greater than 2 okay and then Okay, so this is this is the boolean condition which this is the condition which should be evaluated to boolean always, which should evaluate to boolean. Okay, if the condition evaluates to true, that is four is greater than true, four is greater than two, it is true. So the test case will pass. Okay, otherwise if the evaluation is false, if the evaluation does not evaluate, if this condition does not evaluate to true, then the message that you would be giving over here the error message that you would supply over here then that message would be printed okay if the condition evaluates to false then that means the condition is not satisfied so whatever error message you give inside it this error message will be displayed and the test case will fail Okay, so now uh, I'll just run my test case. I just comment this. Okay, and I run my test case. So now you see that the test news has passed. Since this condition is true, 4 is greater than 2, so the test case has successfully passed. Okay, so similarly, you can do another function, another assert dot is false. Okay, so which is exactly opposite to the is true property. We have another property known as the is false. 
okay and inside it also we need to give in the boolean condition say I give 3 greater than 8 okay and then I give any error message okay and now so over here when this condition would be false then the result would be passed successfully okay so when this condition would be false then that can then then only the test case would be passed so th so this is just the opposite of the is true function it is just the opposite of the is true function we have the is false so when the test case when this condition would evaluates to true when this condition would be evaluated to true then it would result in a failure and if it if it evaluates to false then only it would result in a passing of the test case okay so now this 3 is greater than 8 it is a false condition okay so now the test case would pass successfully Okay, uh, say I uncomment uh, comment this and when I run it, run this test. So now you see that the test has passed successfully since this condition is false and we have used the function is false. So when the condition would be false, then only the test case would pass. Okay, say so suppose I deliberately give the wrong condition over here say I give over here 4 is greater than 22 okay and I run it again okay so over here you can see that the test message the the this test case it has failed with the message as the error message that we have written over here so this error message has displayed over here since this condition is not true it has evaluated to false so the test case has failed accordingly okay so these are some of the annotations which you can some of the assertions which you can just look into in the more deeper way okay so you have a lot more and assertions as well okay so now over here we have just look into the some of the assertions okay so now if suppose I write over here console dot write line um, before assertion error okay and then after this I write console dot write line after assertion error okay so we have this one statement before assertion error in between somewhere in between you will have the condition failing okay and then we have another statement console dot write line after assertion error okay so now let us run the test case again okay so the test has failed and if we look at the output so over here you see that it prints only before assertion error and it did not print the after assertion error line Okay, in the output only the before assertion error line gets printed and after assertion line it is not printed so that means that in a test if the assertion fails in between the lines after that assertion after the assertion failure are not executed it makes sense in a very in a way that if the test case has failed skip over to the next test case all right say um, if you have say suppose three test cases we have three test cases okay if the first test case has passed then the control which switch to the will go to the next test case okay and then if in in the second test case if the second test case fails in between okay only half of it is executed and half of it is not executed half of this is a failure so half of this is executed so the control sh should switch to the next test case the control goes to the next test case but sometimes you might want to report a failure but continue forward as well 
okay so the part of the test case this part of the test case which is not executed you want to get executed even the execution is failing you want it to execute even if the test execution is failing okay so for that what we do is that we use a try catch block inside the assertion okay so over here as we know that this part is not executing this part is a failure so we can just put this part inside the try catch block okay so this this assertion would be kept inside this try block and inside we can put it inside the catch block and over here we can write say caught the error okay so now what will happen is that the control firstly the control will come to this line before assertion error it will print this line and then it will verify the assertion that that is it will assert that whether the condition is true or not okay if it is true the assertion will pass the control will not go to the catch block okay but if the assertion fails then an assertion error is thrown and the control goes to the catch block and after that the code will run normally okay so now let us run the test case once Okay, so now you see that the test has passed successfully and if you look at the output so here you see that it prints firstly it prints the before assertion error and then since the, the condition is not true so it goes to the cats block and then it prints the line called the error okay and after that the code runs normally that is it prints the after assertion error as well. okay so the test is passed this is because just I have caught the error inside this catch block okay since somewhere in the catch block we know that whenever the control comes in the catch block then that means that there is an error but the error is caught it is not reported so what we have to do we have to report the error as well in a separate report file okay so so this is how you can just use you can just use the try catch block in order to in order to catch particular error inside a particular statement okay so where this kind of scenario is mostly used this kind of scenario would be used in the websites just a second can be used on a website having a lot of links okay say I go to quicker.com website okay and I go to this electronics and appliances tab so over here you can see that I have got so many links inside this electronics and appliances tab okay and now my test case says that click on all of these links inside this electronic and appliances tab and then verify that the next page is opening or not so for that we will have to write a for loop which will keep on clicking on each and every link Okay, and uh, which will keep on clicking on each and every link so using the selenium we will have to do that we will we will have to write a for loop which will keep on clicking on each and every link okay so now suppose uh, any of the link is not working so suppose this link is not working then you don't want the code to stop in between you want that this uh, that this error should be reported and the links after that after that after these links should be tested equally okay should be should be tested normally
okay so if this link is not working if suppose this link is not working then some kind of exception or assertion error will be thrown assertion will be failing for this very particular link okay so what you do is that You, what you do is that you will have to make sure that whenever wherever you are clicking on the link and on the link you are uh, you are using the assertion after that you are using the assertion after that to verify that whether the next page is opening or not then you can just use a try catch block then you can just put your code inside the try catch block okay if the link is not working and you can just report the error okay 